Breaking news, Attorney General Jeff Sessions is out and the fate of the Mueller investigation is in question at this hour. In Sessions' place, the new acting Attorney General is a man named Matt Whitaker. Until today, he served as Sessions' chief of staff. The New York Times on how out of the norm the appointment of Whitaker is reports, quote, the Deputy Attorney General, now Mr. Rosenstein, would normally be in line to become the acting Attorney General. But Mr. Trump has complained publicly about Mr. Rosenstein, too. One of the things Trump may like about Whitaker, he's openly criticized the Mueller investigation, writing in an op-ed, quote, it is time for Rosenstein, who is the acting attorney general for the purposes of this investigation, to order Mueller to limit the scope of his investigation to the four corners of the order appointing him special counsel. If he doesn't, then Mueller's investigation will eventually start to look like a political fishing expedition. This would not only be out of character for a respected figure like Mueller, but also could be damaging to the president of the United States and his family, and by extension to the country. For his part, Sessions resigned at the request of the president, writing, quote, Dear Mr. President, at your request, I'm submitting my resignation. The letter, of course, addressed to the president, but it was delivered to his chief of staff, John Kelly, just hours after the midterm elections wound down. But Donald Trump's displeasure with Sessions has long been, like all things Trumpian, vicious and out in the open. Donald Trump criticized Sessions for recusing himself from the Russia probe, saying that he never would have named him AG if he knew he'd follow the rules. I'm disappointed in the attorney general for numerous reasons, but we have an attorney general. I'm disappointed in the attorney general for many reasons, and you understand that. I am disappointed in the attorney general. Uh, he should not have recused himself almost immediately after he took office. And if he was going to recuse himself, he should have told me prior to taking office, and I would have quite simply picked somebody else. Uh, so I think that's a bad thing, not for the president, but for the presidency. I think it's unfair to the presidency, and uh, that's the way I feel. Session should have never recused himself. And if he would, if he was going to recuse himself, he should have told me before he took the job and I would have picked somebody else. The attorney general made a terrible mistake when he did this and when he recused himself, or he should have certainly let us know if he was going to recuse himself. And we would have used a, put a different attorney general in. So he made what I consider to be a very terrible mistake for the country. I wonder how he really feels. Booting Sessions will not mean getting rid of him. Sessions is a key witness in Mueller's investigation into the president. Here to help us through this breaking news, some of our favorite reporters and friends. With us from the Washington Post, White House Bureau Chief Phil Rucker. From the New York Times, reporter Mike Schmidt. Associated Press White House reporter Jonathan Lemire. Frank Figluzzi is here, former FBI Assistant Director for Counterintelligence. Chuck Rosenberg, former U.S. Attorney and former senior FBI official. And with us on set, John Heilman. NBC News and MSNBC National Affairs Analyst and co-host and executive producer of The Circus on Showtime. Chuck Rosenberg, I'm coming straight to you. On all things Robert Mueller, this was always going to be a precarious time. Donald Trump, whether feeling um, backed into a corner by Democratic gains or emboldened by Republican gains, and, and as, as only Trump could be both in one moment, he seems to be. Uh, but the concern was always going to be the fate and the future of the Mueller Probe. My understanding, it is now likely in the hands of a staunch Trump ally, a person who is more a political figure than a respected legal mind, and someone who has written openly about his concerns and displeasure with both the uh, duration and the direction of Mueller's probe. That's right, Nicole. I think you've characterized it fairly. You don't get to be the acting attorney general and overseeing the Mueller probe following the dismissal of Jeff Sessions, unless they know, the Trump knows, the White House knows, uh, what you think and how you're going to act. I hate to say that. I would hope that Matt Whitaker could rise to the occasion. I would hope he understands the gravity of this investigation and that his reputation and the reputation of the Department of Justice are at stake. That's what I hope. What I fear is that they picked him because they know that he thinks the Mueller investigation has gone too far. He wrote that 
a little bit more than a year ago in an article for CNN. If you read that article, it's chilling. I can assure you the president either read that article or had someone read it to him because it tells us exactly how Matt Whitaker thinks about the Mueller probe. Uh, Mike Schmidt, he wrote, I'm going to read from that op-ed, he wrote, the president is absolutely correct. Mueller has come up to a red line in the Russia 2016 election meddling investigation that he is dangerously close to crossing. I believe that's the red line that the president discussed in an interview with you and your colleagues about looking into his business interests. What's your sense of Matt Whitaker's vision for the Mueller probe? Well, that red line has been sort of uh, completely destroyed by the Justice Department when earlier this year they went into the offices of the president's lawyer, executed a search warrant, and took documents with them as part of an investigation into something unrelated to the Russia probe. Now you have that person who thinks that if Mueller did that, that was over the line overseeing the Justice Department. I can't believe that he thinks that since he wrote the op-ed that the investigation has become more tame. So it'll be interesting to see what he does now. Does he really try and rein Mueller in? Is it something simply as not approving measures that Mueller wants to do? Does he cut his funding or does he just not do anything? And that's where we're sitting right now, just a day after the election. Frank Figluzzi, how do people like Rod Rosenstein and anyone on his team who has taken on the role of overseeing the Mueller probe, really, my understanding is only being involved at a very high level, um, sort of navigating perhaps timing of some things. Um, how does someone like Rod Rosenstein now report to um, someone who Robert Costa covered and, and moderated a debate with called a rah-rah Republican? How does someone like Rod Rosenstein report to and turn the Mueller probe over to someone like Whitaker. So Rod's going to have to make a decision about how fully uh, Whitaker gets briefed. And the way Washington works is you brief your chain of command. So Whitaker's going to need a full briefing on everything Rosenstein knows right now about the special counsel investigation. And that's going to get interesting because even though Whitaker's been out publicly saying that Mueller's crossed a red line, he's done so without understanding what Mueller's got. And so I, I suppose there's still a possibility that if Rosenstein gives him a full briefing, that there might be sufficient connections to all of the finances that Mueller is looking at and the idea of Russian collusion that Whitaker will have to say, I see the linkage. They're inextricably linked. They're linked to Russia. And I see why we need to move on with this. But I have to tell you, let's go back to what Chuck said. I, I think we're watching obstruction of justice play out right in plain sight. I fear there's a, prid, a quid pro quo. You do this. I name you acting attorney general or I nominate you for attorney general. You take care of the of the special counsel investigation. And that's public corruption. Mike Schmidt, he, Donald Trump so much has said that to you in an interview, I, I, I believe, uh, during his Christmas vacation. He said he wanted his Roy Cohn. He said he admired Eric Holder because he saw him as Frank Fugluzzi just described him wanting someone to be. He wanted his guys at the Justice Department. Is it your sense that he's realized that ambition he articulated in an interview with you? The president has struggled to understand what the attorney general is and what the attorney general is supposed to typically do in Washington. And the president sees the attorney general as someone who should be his personal lawyer. He has essentially said that. He has said that Bobby Kennedy was that for JFK. He says that Holder was that for Obama. And he wants that himself. He wanted his Roy Cohn, his own personal lawyer, leading the Justice Department. That's what he thought Sessions should do. He could never understand why Sessions recused himself. He couldn't get his head around it. He thought that Sessions would, should be loyal to him. That was more important than the law or the facts or the evidence or the role that Sessions played during the campaign. And he has said it publicly. He does not hide his feelings about it. He has been open about it in July of 2017, as you were playing before. He openly says, look, I wouldn't have made him my attorney general. Everyone around the president says that if he was paying attention during the transition, it clearly would have known that Sessions had to recuse himself because of the role he played during the campaign. Chuck Rosenberg, the conduct of the president vis-a-vis -vis Jeff Sessions is very much under scrutiny by Robert Mueller, both the private conduct that Robert Mueller may or may not have learned about from hours and hours of interviews with, with people in the cabinet and on the senior level of the White House staff. He's also scrutinized, we, we know from Mike and his colleagues reporting, his tweets and his public statements, some of them, most of them, we played. What does this picture look like to you as, as a former prosecutor? Does it look like, as Frank Figluzzi described, obstruction of justice? 
Yeah, I think Frank is uh, spot on, and here's why, Nicole. Uh, we know that Mueller, or we, I think we safely assume that Mueller uh, is looking at an obstruction of justice case. All of those tweets, all of the comments by the president uh, describing what he wants done and how he wants it done look like uh, steps in a path toward obstruction. It strikes me that if you're firing Sessions because you're unhappy that he is not protecting you, as a Roy Cohen would, um, and you put in somebody who will protect you, that's just another brick in the wall. That's another question for Mueller to ask. It's another round of interviews for Mueller to conduct. Why was um, Sessions removed? And it's pretty clear to me it's a removal, even though the letter says resignation. Mm -hmm. uh, and what are these other people going to do now to help protect the president? I think this adds uh, to the obstruction case. It doesn't subtract from it. That's so interesting, Jack. So you're basically saying that, that Whitaker might be of interest as a potential witness to Mueller to answer the question you just posed. What did you promise the president? And, and was there a quid pro quo? How did this deal get done? Yeah. Look, it might be completely innocent. It might be that the president thought Matt Whit Whitaker was the best person on the entire planet to be the acting attorney general of you the United States. You don't seem like you believe that's a viable well, scenario. Uh, he, he, he is a lawyer. Maybe that qualifies him. Maybe. He wrote a, he wrote a letter defending... Um, uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, excoriating uh, Rosenstein and criticizing the investigation by Mueller. Maybe that qualifies him, or maybe there's a deal. And I hate to sound so sinister and to imply something so nefarious, but this is a question that I think Mueller has to ask. All right, and Mueller may also want to see this, because this is Whitaker, the new acting attorney general, the new man in charge of the Mueller investigation, an investigation that has ensnared the president's son, Donald Trump Jr. This is Whitaker on Donald Trump Jr. on CNN. What happened here is, is this lawyer used a pretext to get a meeting with, you know, some important campaign officials to really talk about the issue she wanted to talk to, which was getting rid of this U.S. policy regarding adoptions and used the, you know, a, a quite frankly here in Iowa, we call it a BS uh, excuse of saying that she had opposition research. And, and listen, nobody's talking about what that opposition research is because we all agree it's ludicrous. I mean, that the fact that Russians are funding the DNC and, ha you know, helping Hillary Clinton, uh, no one's advancing that. And, and Don Jr., when he heard that, certainly uh, dismissed it quickly as based on what he said. And I, I think, you know, sort of to suggest that there's a conspiracy here, I mean, you would always take that meeting. You would have somebody from would, your you campaign would always take, take the meeting, that meeting to try to get so the information. So, Frank Vigluzzi, I know this much. He's not a very good campaign strategist because no campaign would ever take that meeting. But we now have in the acting attorney general, the man overseeing the Mueller probe right now as we speak, someone who defended Donald Trump Jr., essentially serving as a defender of not just the president, but the president's family and their legal exposure in the Mueller probe. Is that not a blatant conflict? Yeah, we're, we're looking at under what under most circumstances, Nicole, would raise issues of recusal, right? And, and of course, ironically, that's why Sessions has, has uh, earned the ire of the president. It was because he did the right thing and recused himself. But we've got similar situation here with Whitaker. He's certainly entitled to his opinion. He was speaking at the time without knowledge of what Mueller has about this meeting and how it was set up. But any, any attorney who says anybody would take that meeting when it was offered as dirt on the opposition and, and the respondent says, if that's what it is, I love it. Um, I'm deeply concerned that he would be leading our Department of Justice. Um, Jonathan Lemire, you're at the White House today. Donald Trump didn't really preview this decision, but it may have been on his mind when he answered this question. We don't have it, but Donald Trump asked about firing sessions at that press conference today, which may still be going on. I don't know. We cut away. Um, someone asked him, can you give us clarity of your thinking now after the midterms about the deputy attorney general and your deputy attorney general? Do they have long term security? Here was his answer. Can you give us clarity, sir, on your thinking currently now after the midterms about your attorney general and your deputy attorney general? Do they have long term job I'd security? I'd rather answer that. Uh at a little bit different time. Uh, we're looking at a lot of different things, including cabinet. I'm very happy with most of my cabinet. Uh, we're looking at uh, different people for different positions. You know, it's very common after the midterms. I didn't want to do anything before the midterms. But I will tell you that, for the most part, I'm extremely happy with my cabinet. I think Mike Pompeo has fit in so beautifully. He's done an incredible job. Jonathan 
Bear, he just had to get back to his lair and tweet a little bit. I mean, he announced um, the uh, resignation, I guess, the, the requested resignation of Sessions um, shortly after that wrapped up. And Rod Rosenstein, we understand we showed some footage a couple of minutes ago, is at the White House now for a previously scheduled meeting. What's your sense yeah. from the White House today about how this decision is going over? Yeah, dealing with sessions at a slightly different time meant a couple hours later uh, for the for the president. Um, yes, I mean that was you, the clip you just played was from a remarkable, nearly 90-minute, very combative news conference in which he took a victory lap for the Republicans' results in the midterm elections and sparred with reporters repeatedly. Uh, Jeff Sessions' departure maybe is not a surprise. This is something that he is the president has wanted to do for a very long time. His frustration with Sessions since the recusal, and of course Sessions was the first U.S. senator to endorse Trump's long shot campaign bid back in 2015. Uh, but he, the, the president, never forgave him for that original sin of being disloyal. He's had to be talked out of firing him repeatedly by some of his closest White House aides, outside advisors, including his personal attorney, is Rudy Giuliani, who has told him not to do it. And he, the president begrudgingly agreed to wait until after the midterms, but had been telling people recently that he wanted to act very soon after the ballots were cast. Uh, he acted, he did indeed that with doing this today. And Sessions, for Sessions, he was spotted over here this weekend showing his grandkids around the briefing room. He clearly knew this was coming. Uh, he received the phone call today from the chief of staff, John Kelly, and sent over that undated, you'll note, undated letter of resignation, uh, one that he had tried to submit previously and was sort of talked out of it by Rance, then chief of staff, Rance Priebus and others. So this is, this is something that Sessions saw coming. He didn't want to have to go voluntarily. He felt like he told people around him that he was doing the president's work at the Department of Justice, but there was simply no way he was ever going to get back in the good graces of Donald Trump, who basically wouldn't speak to him. In White House meetings, he would ignore him. He would have Sessions send Department of Justice underlings instead. And Phil Rucker, that's exactly how he got to know Mr. Whitaker. He got to know Mr. Whitaker because while he was doing everything that Jonathan described, Whitaker sort of wormed his way in, um, to coin a phrase there, and, and developed this bond with the president. They <coughs> connected. Um, but everything that Jonathan Lemire described is on a list of questions that Robert Mueller gave Donald Trump's lawyers. Robert Mueller wants to ask the president what he thought and did regarding the recusal of Mr. Sessions. He wants to ask Donald Trump what he thought and did in reaction to the news of the appointment of the special counsel. He wants to ask the president, why did you hold Mr. Sessions' resignation and who did you discuss it with? He wants to ask the president about his treatment of Sessions as an obvious yeah. investigation into whether or not the president was trying to obstruct the investigation into his own campaign and himself. And Nicole, that's because a lot of uh, the things that the president did in his relationship with Jeff Sessions, the way he managed the attorney general, the way he communicated with the attorney general, uh, could potentially be exhibits in an obstruction of justice case. And this, uh, the events in the last hour are, are a huge uh, test, I think, for the Democrats who are taking over this House majority. They're going to have subpoena power in those committees. Nancy Pelosi, who's poised to become the new speaker, has said she sees this victory uh, as bringing uh, checks and balances to the Trump administration, holding the Trump administration accountable. And I think they're going to begin uh, investigations as soon as they're able to uh, into why Trump fired Sessions and, and try to answer some of the questions that you just laid out that the special counsel is after. John Heilman, firing Sessions is not surprising and potentially not politically perilous for the president, but naming Whitaker could be like all things Trump, the second half of the sentence that gets him in trouble. Sure, although in some sense also not surprising. I think the thing that is so jarring What's jarring about this is not, we've talked for months about the fact Sessions is going to go sometime after the midterms. Uh, it's that it happened today. Right. And, and that, I, I, something that did not actually surprise me, I think I said on the air on various times, right. that if Trump woke up the day after the election feeling either right. emboldened <laughs> or threatened, that or this, or, or in this case, as it turns out, both. I, I, that's what you see here with this sort of split decision, which right. is not really as much as a split decision as people say, but he, he feels clearly emboldened right. by the enhanced majorities in the Senate. He feels clearly threatened by the fact that Democrats have taken back the House. And make no mistake, I mean, I, I, everything that was just said, I, all of our smart analysts and reporters said really smart things. I just want to be at 30,000 feet about this one thing, Please. which is the president is moving rapidly to try to shut down the Mueller probe. There is no ambiguity about what he is doing here. It, is, it has been clear that he's wanted to do that for a long time. He wanted to wait until the election to find out 
to see exactly what the political makeup was going to be and exactly where the threats were and what the latitude would be uh, with the Senate. And now he knows. And so very quickly he's moving towards not just the things we're seeing firing, firing, again, be clear about this, firing the attorney general, resigning at your request is firing. You fire Je- he just fired Jeff Sessions and he's installed a lackey uh, against all precedent. The, the deputy attorney general should be the acting attorney Correct. general now. Th- that's why you have a deputy is right. so that if the, the attorney general leaves, you step up into that job. The only reason that's not happening is because he wants to not have Rod Rosenstein overseeing the Mueller probe any longer. These things, can we not mince words about this or have any ambiguity or lack of clarity about what's happening? And if you understand that and the obvious urgency that Trump is moving with here the day after the midterm elections at the to maximize the period where he can act while we are in a period where Republicans control both branches of Congress. We, there is, again, to be absolutely clear, there's no ambiguity. We are hurtling towards the constitutional crisis we've all been worried about for the last two years. We are on the brink of it right now, and I don't, I don't uh, have, have any, it would not surprise me at all that we would not find ourselves in the middle of it in the next 48 hours. And starting perhaps this afternoon. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.